Our word of the day is subluxation. You've probably heard that word before if you've been getting chiropractic care, but what does it actually mean? A very simple definition for subluxation is damage in the nervous system. And it happens three ways. Number one is probably the most common that we think of, which happens through physical trauma. That's a bone that's out of alignment that's causing damage to the nerves that live inside of them. But the second way is through our thoughts, negative thoughts and emotional dysregulation. The third way is through toxins, the things in our environment, the things that we put on our bodies and in our bodies. But subluxation at its core is a neurological issue. And when there's damage in the nervous system, it does three things to our body. First, it causes tension. Damage in the nervous system will cause stress and tension to build up in the body, and it causes your body to get stuck in a state of fight or flight or sympathetic overdrive. Now, when that subluxation is left there, when it's not corrected in this tension state, then it moves on to the second phase, which is exhaustion. The nervous system stays wound up and in distress for so long that it eventually burns out. We get exhausted. And then at that point, it's really easy to move on to number three, which is mass confusion. Remember, the nervous system is the connection highway from your brain to every single organ, every cell, every muscle and tissue in your body. So if your nervous system is wound up, then worn out, it shuts down, your brain's not speaking to your body to tell everything how to function properly and your body systems start to get confused. Obviously, subluxation is a big deal. It is very, very detrimental to all people of all ages. But especially in our day and age, I think it's really easy for us to overlook the early signs of it. Number one, we can pretty well power through that. We live in a world that's full of stress and our environments are causing us to be wound up all of the time. So we can adapt to that pretty well for short periods of time. But at stage two, that's when subluxation starts to catch up to us. That's when we start to experience the symptoms in our body of exhaustion. And then at phase three, that's where we have the full-blown symptoms of pain, of sickness and disease. Obviously, we don't want to wait until we get down to phase three before we do something about it. The best way to correct a problem is to be preventative, to address it before we even start to feel it. So for kids, subluxation is especially detrimental because it affects their development. They are in the prime years of their developmental stages. So a confused system is going to cause even bigger problems early in life, but then that will carry on through into adulthood. It causes their entire system to be slowed, stalled, and confused, which results in poor sleep, poor gut health, poor immune function, and they're not able to develop their motor coordination the way that they should. See, those foundations for proper development and proper health are not laid when the nervous system is interrupted by subluxation. Now, in today's day and age, healthcare providers and parents are getting curious. They're starting to ask questions and look for the root cause of the problem. But unfortunately, a lot of the answers they're coming up with are still only secondary problems. For example, gut immune health, that connection there is really popular these days. Everyone is talking about gut health. People are talking about the gut microbiome, they're taking probiotics, and they're addressing the gut because the gut is the second brain, which is true, that's really important. But think about that for a minute. The gut is the second brain meaning that gut health is secondary to the nervous system. Lip ties and tongue ties, those are secondary to the nervous system. Primitive reflexes are secondary to the primary nervous system. Most of what the world is caught up on now is actually a secondary problem. Now, don't get me wrong, these things are issues. If a child isn't able to do the basic functions like eat and sleep and poop and digest their food properly, if they're having poor immune function, they're getting frequent sickness and disease, that's a problem. But all of those problems start with subluxation in the central nervous system. So in order to make sure that your child is set up for success to be 
healthy and well for the long term, start by looking at the root cause. Address the subluxation, bolster the central nervous system, and your child is going to thrive.